Hello and welcome to another edition of Video Games to the Max. I am your host, Sean Gomery, and here with me as usual, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And well, this is episode 393 of the show, and we got plenty to talk about here. This was the week of uh, premieres and showcases, and then uh, what could have been as well with a certain game. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, We'll talk about the Fallout TV show. Mark has watched the whole thing. I've only watched a couple of episodes. Uh, so we'll kind of get into that. But Mark's the one that has like more history of the series than I do. So it'll be interesting to hear his take. We got the talk about Star Wars Outlaws with that new trailer dropping. The what could have been with Dead Space 2 or even a new Dead Space game. Uh, the Triple I showcase happened this week too. We'll talk about that. And some more things right after that. You are listening to Video Games to the Max. All right. Well, let's just get this out of the way really quick here. Uh, if this is your first time listening or many a time listening, we do appreciate you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We do the show live uh, on Fridays around the 12, 30, 1 o'clock time there. And you can watch that on our YouTube channel, WSU Network. You can go on uh, Facebook, WSU Network as well. You can go on Twitter, uh, Twitch, all that's the same. I uh, can go on my Twitter, WSU Sean as well, and you can watch it there or wherever uh, you like to watch live things. Uh, we pretty much have a space for that. You can also listen later uh, on podcasts with your ears, or you can just watch it later on the YouTube. And if you do, you not only get what we do here uh, with Video Against the Max, we have a bunch of cool people that do other uh, content that is equally just as awesome. Uh, the Rollage Broadcasting folks, they do all of the entertainment stuff, so they will have their own uh, Fallout TV show review uh, at some point. Uh, I think that's not necessarily Mr. Rattler's doing it. It's uh, another one of his uh, team. So that might come about, uh, come out a little bit later than just like, you know, the next week. But they did do the uh, Godzilla vs. Kong new movie review is out there. Um, you can go check that out. The, and we also have a, an anime show, Otaku Cafe. They just did their uh, winter finales, talking about all the new anime that's out and and what the uh like what they thought were the best winter shows for this year and then they also every after every season they do like an awards kind of thing uh where they give out like you know best anime best girl best boy all that stuff uh you can go watch that on the channel too so yeah uh, definitely a lot to check out there. We are going to go ahead and get started, I guess, a little bit different. Talk about an actual, not interactive uh, part of media here with the, the Fallout Amazon series, which interestingly has already been renewed for a second season before the first one even dropped. And that's also because they got a really nice chunk of change that they're getting for moving the whole uh, shooting of it and everything to California. So uh, that's that's cool news that everybody gets to watch it. We'll know that we're at least getting a second season beyond that. Obviously, they got to see what happens here. But Mark, I mean, you're the one that has a lot more familiarity with the series than I do. I've played like parts of New Vegas and three and four here. And then what usually happens to me with Western RPGs happens where I stop playing them and then I don't come back. Um, but I've seen a lot of people. uh say that it's making them want to play the, you know, play games in the series. And of course it helps that it, you know, a lot of these games are on game pass uh, and all that stuff. So they're available for people very easily, uh, or you can go, you know, find them in a sale. Yeah. They aren't like expensive. I'm like, what do you, yeah. you know? Who cares? Well, but I'm just saying there's people that just, they don't, they're not going to go and try to find them. I'm sure they'll probably have them on sale. Also fall 76 is free right now um, too, for this week. If you get it off uh, Amazon, prime uh so a lot of people getting into that they their fall 76 has like their highest player count uh in a long time as well thanks to the series uh what do you what do you think about it 
Uh, I thought it was mostly a good, a great show up until like the last two episodes, uh, where they kind of bungle it with the continuity. Uh, I won't spoil it today, <laughs> and spoil yeah. it next week once you've seen it. But they, they, they like the you know Bethesda claims they're not retconning it, but they basically delete Fallout One and Two and New Vegas from like the timeline. Uh which is really weird. <laughs> That's interesting that they're going to drop. Like, I understand, okay, Fallout 1 and 2, they technically, that was made by a different studio, you know. Well, so uh, is New Vegas. <laughs> right, but like New Vegas, at least Obsidian is with the same team. <laughs> like, you know, um, technically uh, Bethesda and Obsidian could decide to come together to do another Fallout New Vegas that they wanted. I mean, like, you know. Well, they're, yeah, they're all owned by Microsoft now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But so yeah, uh, I won't get into why what what like that whole hornet's nest. But I'll just say I didn't like it, <laughs> and I think like I'm trying to think of like what's in like what's in like, another like long running like RPG series that has continuity between them. I mean, you can't say like Final Fantasy because they're all different. Or right, I mean maybe Persona. Yeah, almost uh, all RPG series have some kind of. They're not uh, continuing, right? They ha- they, yeah. So yeah, I guess it's hard for me to like. I mean, Tales would probably be the the big one, right? Not Tales, um, Trails, the Trail series. That's all continuous, right? And they have even branching storylines off of that, and uh, it's it's a well, huge weave of stories if you try to play it all. I'm not, I guess another good example would be Suikoden. Like, that actually yeah, is a, a chronology. Uh, and the, one of the games kind of screws it up. It's still there. Uh, so, yeah, for them to, like, delete, two, like, three of the three games out of the six or whatever, seven or whatever, seems really weird. Uh, aside from that, though, I don't know, the first five episodes were, like, really great. Uh, I liked uh, Ella Fernell. I think that's her, that's her name. Yeah. Uh, she's like really good. Uh, as yeah, like she was great player. as the vault dweller. Yeah, Lucy. Uh, I I don't really know her live acting and stuff that well. I don't watch Yellow Jackets. I know her from like Star Trek Prodigy, where she voiced like someone fairly different, but you can still kind of hear like hear her voice a tad. Uh, the Maximus guy is okay. He gets better. I I he he seems a little goofy in the first like two episodes or like a little directionless but he he does have a nice arc and the ghoul is good you know walton goggins, oh, is, walton goggins is fantastic yeah. as a ghoul like yeah just in the parts that i've watched like anytime he's on screen i want to keep watching and he's right he has a really yeah they actually, they actually do a lot more with him in the past like in the pre-nuke stuff than i thought they would because, right. you know, the first episode opens with, like, him at a kid's birthday party, like, kind of slumming it, I would say, as, like, the like the cowboy clown or cowboy. Yeah. Uh, and then within 10 minutes, so California's nuked and, you know, that's it. But they right. go back to him quite a bit in later episodes, like, what he was doing before, which is pretty interesting. Uh, there's a... What do you think of the? Uh, I've heard, I've seen a lot of mixed talk about the um, the Brotherhood stuff, like how much the way they're involved and. Uh, so you've seen the first three episodes, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They do kind of. There is that big question of who he, uh, Maximus has, like a friend, Dane. Uh, it was like the more like she's she's the one who gets uh like the job first because she gets injured and it, everyone thinks it's Maximus who did it or he he might mm-hmm. know who did it. They actually do solve that by the end of the show, which is good. Uh, the Brotherhood stuff is always kind of a, a little weird because the, the 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 institution is so goofy, or you know, just the idea of it, like. Uh, 
but I think the I think the armor looks really good. Like oh, the it, armor they did great, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, you can like some of it's a little CGI, which is fine, but you can tell that's a pretty practical looking suit or you know a practical prop for at least most of it. So good on them for that. Uh, what else? I think the world, like the setting, or like you know the whole, you know, it looks great. The show. Yeah, with it following the like, because it it follows basically like three different stories, you know. Yeah, uh, there's the three main Lucy, characters. So. Yeah, well, they also introduce a uh, fourth later on, but yeah, it's Lucy, the uh, Maximus, the brother, brother the Steel guy, and then the the uh, Vault guy or the Ghoul. Sorry, they introduce they go back to the Vault. Uh, sooner, like they start going back to the Vault, uh, pretty soon with uh, Lucy's brother. There's like a mystery there as well, uh, which is not defined that well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? I think that yeah. first episode does a really good job of like setting everything for people that aren't familiar a lot with the series. Like you kind of get the idea. Um, and yeah, then, I mean, it's, yeah. it's very much like intro to Fallout World or, you know. Uh, the one, I mean, Lucy is like a very fresh-faced character. Or, like that's kind of the whole point. Is she's very right, naive. exactly. I mean, that's I, it's supposed to kind of be like the same way you, as the player character, aren't familiar with this world until you step out in it. So yeah, the one thing you'll see this, I think, in like episode six as well. Uh, I won't spoil that one. But the one funny thing about Lucy's character is she is like incredibly sexually frustrated. Yeah, like it's hilarious, and the fact that they actually like talk like there's a conversation in the first episode with her and her cousin. Yeah, her cousin like wants to marry her, and she's like, mm-hmm. "No, we play, we messed around when we were like, when we were like teenagers, but now we have to repopulate the vault, so you can't do that." And it's like, "What?" Yeah, like <laughs> like playing around with your cousin is not great for repopulating yeah. America. Or... <laughs> like it has a it has a decent amount of humor. Uh a little, some of it's a little like it's not in your face about it. Like it's not, you know, it's not front and center, but it's kind of like more in the periphery. But it's still funny. Like uh, yes. the, um, uh, I forget the character's name, but the shop owner in the second episode. Yes, the old Dicky character was like really, really great. funny. <laughs> yeah, like I, t- she tells her to like get out. I told you to get out of here like three times and then see what happens. Yeah. Um. Having the uh-huh. the scientist character from, and you know, he's the guy from. Uh, well, yeah, Michael Emerson. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was, it was hilarious to me because uh, I don't think you watched it, but he was on a show called Person of Interest for like five. Yes, years. I did. I love that show. Okay, yeah. Yeah. him and the dog, and the, you know, just like yes. But you can't get away from dogs, can you? No. Uh, yeah, but he's only in the show for like two episodes, so. Right, yeah, the, the way that um, they uh, they deal with that—that's interesting as well. That like a lot of that plays, it feels very much like the parts I played of Fallout. Like you get a lot of that. The humor yeah. is very so. Like, you can tell Todd Howard really had a lot. I don't know how much exactly he had to do with it, but he seems very happy with it, and it seems like there is a lot. They they. They made sure to pay homage to it. It's not like, you know, I'm sure that there are probably people that are like, oh, they messed this up or they didn't do this right or whatever. But I, from like what Walton Goggins said, you know, he's like, if we made this all for the fans, it wouldn't be anywhere near as good. Right. I um, I, I, dis- I somewhat disagree with that because they make, cho- they make choices later on that are, are like really pissing off the fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's a weird, it's really weird what they did. Like we can talk about it later on next week, probably. Cause you'll probably finish the show by then. Uh, but yeah, they just make some really awkward choices that does kind of diminish the show by the end. Uh, like it starts off, to hear. starts off great. And then by the end you're like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Uh, That'd be interesting. I see a lot of. I mean, it's it's always very easy for everyone to heap praise at the beginning, right? And right. then, um, 
like I, I if I was gonna review the, if you review it, like I'd see, like the first five episodes, I'd give like nine or ten. So, like I think they were I feel like all really good. Episode six and seven, it's only an eight episode show. Episode six and seven, I'd I'd say like we're like sevens. Yeah. Uh, and then the last episode is like a five or a four, just because of like what it did to like the continuity or you know just like not even that but just like it, it raises a lot of like weird questions the show can't can't like answer like you can tell it's, you can tell the show is made by the westworld guys or you know the the team behind that because that well was they gotta leave like, they i think the, part of it is there, that they had to there's a the they, difference between yeah, having a ahead. few mysteries uh set, like setting up a few mysteries that's fine mm-hmm. But the, like they set up so much stuff that they can't answer, and they won't like they won't even like bother to try to answer because like they didn't think of it like logically through. So that'll be an issue. <laughs> but why would you say that they can't answer? It? Uh because like I said, they don't. They don't. They didn't think it through. About what, like, what's what's the problem, or, or what, like, how can we solve this? They just like said something. Well, they ha- they just have like a line, or like have a situation, but they won't solve it, or they, you know. And I'm trying to really tap that, tap that around this like a few issues. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the problem. <laughs> right, I understand. But, I mean, I personally it, don't mind, but since the show is so fresh, I don't want to spoil it for people. That- right. You know, Let, let's just say, or, yeah. Let's just say, like the main, the main bad guy in the show is really weirdly written, or like her situation mm-hmm. does not make any sense at all. <laughs> okay, I, I'm guessing you're talking about the, the one that appears at the beginning. Yeah, which, she's the one who breaks yeah. into Vault Thirty Two. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. um also, I love you know, I just because of being such a big Twins Twin Peaks fan, having uh, him be the dad, Tom McLaughlin, yeah, yeah, is is it's fantastic. I, <laughs> see, I I kind of wish they had more of him. Yeah, like he's I agree. Uh, well, I mean, that's the whole point of getting her to go outside, so that kind of makes sense. Like, yeah, why, but it would have been nice to have like a flashback or like they never flashed back to him at all, or like him like raising her and her brother or i mean he 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 has like five or six lines in the first episode right. and he comes back in the last episode and that's it <laughs> yeah so uh, i mean i mean like i mean uh at least fallout 3 you play enough of that because it's the whole damn intro where like liam neeson is your dad and he actually you know you spend a little time with him <laughs> before right. you get ejected out but this doesn't really have that at all. Uh, you know, it's just like the party scene, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's that it's part of it's the pressure of kind of you want to make sure you keep things somewhat moving to get people hooked. And then, yeah, but also, it, it, it's a, it, yeah. I would say it's also kind of a fatal flaw because, like, she's like, oh, her big quest is finding her dad, and he's such like a non factor in the first episode i'd be like okay i get it you know yeah sure sure. uh but i really do like the world design like i think the vault looks really good uh everything about the show like production wise it was really great and the cast is all good and everything but it's just the writing especially later on that's just kind of wonky (laughs) do you feel like there's like let's say somebody hasn't played this series at all Right, and they watch this show, and they go, "Oh uh, man, I really want to play these now." Is there one that you say would? Is this based off the most? I'd say Fallout Three, because it's the whole finding your dad thing. Uh, yeah, the whole, that's the whole crux. The uh, it kind of follows follows the same basic plot as well. Of you know. Getting getting to the first town, having stuff happen, or you know, and right. then getting companions along the way. Uh, yeah, 
it, I thought the Michael Emerson or Michael Emerson was a tad weird because it, it seemed like he was working for the Enclave, but he also had a pit boy. It's like, what? Yes. <laughs> why, why would he have this? <laughs> or, you know, like. I love the way that they, uh, like, they communicated the thing at the beginning with um, where she's doing the the marriage proposal deal and they all just like basically do the equivalent of texting her back with the, yeah. with the fit boys or whatever it was like uh that's good that's a good reference for or, yeah her, yeah her interview at the, at the at the start was pretty funny when she was like oh, yeah the technical skills and her parenting and it's like yep why don't you just say your special stat is like I'm, I'm highly intelligent i have eight points in that or something yeah and I mean, then, uh, sure. go ahead yeah. sorry no, I was gonna say that on the whole, I think the show's re- is good, but just like the last few episodes, really, it's like a, a like a bitter taste in my mouth. But I, I think like you watching it or like a non fan, they'll be like, okay, like it, it'll kind of like breeze past them, or, you know? Right, exactly. We're we're not gonna get that whole like. I mean, I guess like you would with any everything. Like I told you, it's like there's probably a lot of references that I'm not getting. Uh, that I'm sure you I mean, did, or there are probably yeah. references I don't, I'm not getting because I'm not like obsessed with the f- show, with the franchise or anything. But I can, there are stuff I can point out, like the the cartoon in the, in the first episode. All the right. kids are watching it, like, it's like mm-hmm. oh, I remember picking up picking up that crap, or like certain like uh, stuff in like the house, or you know, this you know certain environmental stuff I, I can p- pick up probably better than you can or better than some people but some of the stuff you know breeze past me right uh the one i think that happens in episode maybe episode five uh do you know who matt barry is yes he popped up in it uh and he's real good <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay i definitely gotta make sure i get to then yeah, I'm. I'm sure that whenever, because Randy's watching it with um his wife, and she's, I think, even a bigger Fallout fan than he is. Yeah. So, like, I'm sure when they're watching it, there's going to be a lot of great stuff that they catch, you know. Um, but I, I'm I'm glad that these kind of things exist and that this is good, right? Like, they could have, it could have been bad, and then we're talking about another. Oh man, a bad video game adaptation, whatever. It's great that this is great. People are enjoying it. It's already got a second season, so you can already know watching it that they're going to continue this. It's not something you're going to just watch and then it's over. Um, and it kind of led into obviously speculation about, well, Todd, what about your other big series that people enjoy? What about Red that ball? one? Like, is that. <laughs> Uh, he says that he's apparently been approached several times about Elder Scrolls, and he said no. Um, do, you worry, do you think that's it, more has to do with like people are going to compare it to Game of Thrones, or you think it's like, what do you think I, his reasoning for saying no would be? I think a problem with Elder with Elder Scrolls, honestly, is it's so generic that like what can you do? Like, there's not like a huge story involved with it. Mm-hmm. So it would just be create like just creating stuff like kind of whole cloth. And I don't think it'd be compared to Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones had like defined characters and relationships. Right. Well, I just so, mean like, okay, it's another fantasy. It kind is, of yeah, setting, just like, you know, yeah, just like fantasy. I mean, yeah. I think if they did like an Elder Scrolls TV show, it'd, be, it'd probably have a lot more magic in it or a lot more, you know, right? That, that type of stuff. Because Game of Thrones certainly didn't <laughs> like that. Was kind yeah, of but old. considering like we've had the Witcher show already, we've had Game of Thrones already, uh, like you know the Dungeons and Dragons movie, like we've had a lot of that. So like Fallout is spe- Fallout feels so much different than those things, right? It feels like something we don't see a lot. Right. Yeah, we had Westworld, and it's made by some of the same people, but it feels unique. As whereas like you're saying, Elder Scrolls would feel like. Okay, here's another fantasy thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the closest um, thing you probably compare Fallout to is like the silo. Uh, yeah, that's it. That. But that's like a drama show, or, you know, in much more grounded in like reality than Fallout. Because Fallout is intentionally kind of going, it's not campy, but it's kind of going from like a slightly more, like 
irreverent take on stuff. Uh, was a great character in, I think it's episode eight or seven, that is Yen's. <laughs> because it's it's a guy obsessed with auto quality in the in the fucking apo- you know post apocalypse. Yeah, I, uh, like, I can see yep. that. I can, I can definitely see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, like it doesn't matter if the world basically ended. I still care about my damn audio quality. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, 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 you can't get, you can't get. Oh, you want the original pressings because they had the right ambient, you know, they had the right mids, highs, and bass. And I'm just like, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, makes sense. So I mean, I'll certainly watch that season two when it comes out in a year or two or whenever. But right. Uh yeah, I I just think like the writing did kind of let it down by the end, but on the whole, it's still recommendable, or, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and yeah, like I think episode six, I want to say it's episode six is when like Lucy and Maximus actually do have like much more, like they they get together, and they have like much more of like a friendship, and that actually really helps crown the characters as yeah. well. Uh, because you get like a lot more of his, I wouldn't say motivation, but like, like a lot more of his as a as a good character. Because that's the problem in the first few episodes is he doesn't seem. He's pretty passive as a character, and it's like once he actually gets involved, it's when it get, he, he gets better. Yeah, I do love the scene when uh, they do the passing of the, the brotherhood suit. Ah, uh, which... so well. Yeah, wh- which one when he when uh the first Titus gets not gets out of it or yeah the first one okay yeah uh, yeah uh, that was it, that was really well and then it plays off the whole like why you, that they do the whole story of why he joined the Brotherhood and everything what happened to him and then that moment I'm just like there's no way because you can feel that like man I he better not do what I think he's gonna do and then he actually does the opposite and I was like okay yes. Totally down with this, and then I love the the like him playing around in it and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it yeah. feels like something totally anybody would do if they get um get in that the first time. So, I think it's was, also uh, it, the show is also kind of interesting because they cast a lot of comedians as in like main mm-hmm. role or not main roles but guest roles. Like, the first I think it of- makes sense for the world though, because there's like you said, there's a lot of humor that. Well, yeah, but they're not like playing at they're not playing comedic characters, like, right? But but it's much it's a, a, like the Bill Burr situation in The Mandalorian, like yeah. casting a comedic actor but having him do, do like a dramatic role or semi dramatic role, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, I liked it well enough. Uh, you know, once we talk about it next week, maybe we can get into like the more nitty gritty part of it, or yeah, like definitely give people something. the time to. Yeah. What do you think about? Uh, I know we've talked about this a few times when other shows have come on, but a lot of talk about why Amazon did the opposite of what they normally do when they have a big series, uh, where they make it normally they make them episodic, and this one they just dropped it all together. And a lot I, of people were saying that this kind of ruins the whole keeping the show in the zeitgeist kind of thing. I don't know. I don't. I don't care. Uh, yeah. I think the show kind of works almost like, you know, it's like an, well, like a six hour, seven hour movie, you know, like, and it's not like, I also don't think the show cliffhangers well, or it's not like episode, every episode doesn't end like some huge cliffhanger. So you're not like waiting, dying to see it the next week or anything. So I think it, the way they did it was perfectly fine. Also, I don't care. I I mean, even if the show comes out weekly, I would probably still rather just, you know, wait till it's all done and then just watch it all in one go anyway. So, yeah, that's what I saw too as well. It's like, how many people are going to watch it? Um, I mean, episodically, but- when it's something that's not necessarily like when you're trying to get people to really watch the show, and how many people are going to drop off and then be like, oh, I'll just watch it when it's all out. Yeah. Like, how many shows? Do you currently watch weekly anyway? No, I mean, just like a few, you know. I don't, I don't watch, watch any. I, I mean, unless it's like, 
the only show that I actually regularly watch would be like Star Trek, Strange, Strange New Worlds, and Prodigy, Doctor Who, when that's you know when that's on. Right, Doctor. Uh that's about it. House of Dragon you know? for me when that comes back. Yeah, but oh. as someone who just like you know marathon the first season of Power Rangers, yeah, it's a lot a lot more fun for me to just watch. 20 episodes in a row then oh no definitely i think but i understand people's thought process of like tv shows have always kind of been this way of if you really want them to kind of like be talked about or have that when the show is airing kind of thing like it, it was weird to me almost that uh, disney did it with uh, the new x-men series because it's yeah. uh it's animated like i would have thought they would have just dropped that all at once uh, but I can kind of see that in a way of just oh, when the right. new episodes comes out or the two new episodes come out, people talk about it. You know, they did it, they did that with that what if show. Yeah, the what if show. Uh, I don't know. You can make a point for both, but also you know these things aren't on TV anymore, so right. who cares? <laughs> yeah, most people are not actually watching them live on TV. They're watching them on whatever streamer later. Right. Or, you know so. Uh, th that's kind of, I think, what's hurt TV the most is you don't have the big, outside of the absolutely huge ones that still exist, like I think like, you know, House of Dragon and a few others that have the water cooler moments, you don't really have that anymore with TV shows. Uh, it just becomes a, like, oh, what do you watch? Oh, okay, I watch this. Oh, and you find you might find well, one or two shows that you both watch. And, I mean, yeah. it's a problem also of too many options, and then, you know... Yeah, that too. The landscape is so splintered. You like, know, you can literally never get out of the niche of shows that you like because there's the next one for you. It's always yeah. funny to me to, yeah. to look up old shows I used to like that were canceled to do, like, low ratings. It's like, oh, this show only got 8 million viewers. That's why it was canceled, because of low ratings. And it's like, if the show got that now... It would be like the number one or number two show, on right? TV. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like you look at the 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 ratings for for WWE right now. I'm like, yeah, man, that would have been nothing back then when everybody was watching it. But now it's like they got to be happy with that because they know he more people are watching on they're watching YouTube highlights or they're watching the shorter version on Hulu or whatever later. Like you know, right. so. It is what it is. That's that's how TV is. But it's good when you have these uh, these ones based on video games that are good, and yeah. and that's what I'm excited about. Is hopefully we'll have more between the movies and the shows, uh, and not necessarily uh, the bad stuff that we used to have. So, right. Uh, respect those video game annotations because they're probably going to be the the next thing until we you know run out of the ones that people can. Make a well, choice. Yeah, you Mar can't do Marvel and DC anymore. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, I mean, over. it's gonna really be interesting what happens with uh, Wolverine and Deadpool if that can even jumpstart uh, that because you know they're talking about X Men and all that stuff, and I'm just like, something's gotta keep them afloat until then. I think, yeah. I think Deadpool and Wolverine will be actually a, a pretty big hit. Yeah, but the problem is that'll probably be the end of it. I mean, they may make a Deadpool four, you know, right? If they can, if they can get. Paid but I mean, enough. like getting people but, interested in the MCU in general again. Oh well, I, you know, I think like, that's a, that's a problem. Is like the MCU has exhausted all their big characters, or you know, their big yeah. properties. So it's like, yeah, we're getting a fucking, uh, mis uh oh, Mister, is it Mister Wonderful or, I forget the character's name, Wonder, Wonder Man. That's it. Yeah. A Wonder Man TV show and an Echo TV show, and it's like, what the fuck is you know who the fuck cares? I'm like, right? Yeah, even, I mean, we are like, getting some bigger ones, but now we have to wait. They're not all coming. Bam, bam, bam! Like you're getting the Fantastic Four again. You know, you're getting, yeah. Uh, this one, you'll get the X Men eventually. If if the ones that are in process now do decently enough, it's just like I wonder how much. What is a win for them now that? a billion is not a success, right? Like what is, is right. it 500 million? Is it 200 million? Like what is considered a success for them now is, is yeah. what I'm wondering. Uh, you well, know, they because that's the yeah, thing is they got too high on Avengers level money. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, 
and you know Ant Man three sucked, but it maybe turned a profit, like a, sm- a very small one. But like you know, Miss Marvel two or you know the Marvels was certainly a bomb. yeah. Like the only one that got even close was Guardians three, right? Right. And then everything else paled in comparison. So uh, it's yeah. definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with or that. Like, like, what is their new Eternals? One. You know that that kind of bombed to an extent. Yeah, but they but... had other movies after that. Like I'm I'm just talking right. about in this recent string of stuff that has really fallen off a cliff. Yeah, and even the uh, TV he, shows don't seem to have the same interest at all. You know, it's yeah. yeah. So we shall see uh, yep. what's going on uh, with this. We'll we'll talk about this more next week. I I will probably try to make a concerted effort to uh, finish watching the series, and we can get into some nitty gritty stuff or whatever um, there, and and give people more of an option to. Okay, we're going to get into spoilers, so if you haven't watched it by the second week that it's out, that's kind of on you at that point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, let's move on here to uh, talking about another uh, movie franchise that is also, they've gotten a million, a gazillion games, but especially this year, it feels like everything Star Wars is getting remastered or something else. But uh, Ubisoft showed off the story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. Um, yeah. What did you... Uh, it, it's about like three minutes. Uh, what did you think of of what they showed here? Anything impressing you on that? Or uh, Two things jumped, kind of jumped out at me. One was about halfway through, it really looked like an Assassin's Creed game for a second when you're, like, doing parkour around, like, some city, uh, I was like, is this person going to climb up the wall? <laughs> like, it looked really, it almost, I almost thought that was going to happen. And yeah, the second thing, and I, I know you don't particularly want to talk about this, and I'm pretty tired of it already as well, but what the fuck is up with the main character? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, like, I, to me, it depends on the lighting it, of and what picture you grab. And I, you know. I'm not like I don't particularly care about like overall attractiveness for you know who you're playing as like that much, but she looks like a stereotypical like lesbian trucker from the '80s, and it's like yeah, I, I who mean, they, who, who did they make I, the like? I'm, I'm, I'm no, no, they, like, I don't, like, I don't know about, uh, I mean, the model this is based off of is doesn't look something like that. So that's uh, the thing that like, that's what's like making me crazy is the, like yeah. the actress, I, I, her name is like something weird. Uh, right. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Humberly Gonzalez. She's incredibly attractive. Like, she, right. Right. You know, and so they get this fairly beautiful woman to voice the character and presumably like mocap and basic, you know, base it off her. Yeah. And so you're taking like a, you know, not eight, nine, ten woman, depending on what you think, you know, your own opinion right. and okay. turn it into a two. <laughs> uh, but I mean, again, like, I don't know how this works. I'm not going to pretend to know how this stuff works about, uh, but, is it only a like they can base it off her, but it's not supposed to look exactly like her? Does that involve more money if it's based exactly off of her? Uh, they it's it, not it, like if okay, but if yeah. that's the case, uh, like she's not like a big, big actress, you know, right? She's but a few, like, yeah, I, 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 I just. I think about the Stellar Blade thing. You know, they got the beautiful yeah. Korean actor, uh-huh. Korean model, or whatever. Right, but she doesn't look exactly like her either. They they did the anime face with no. With that, the body. That's what I'm. That's right. what I was gonna say. Is yeah. they had a beautiful woman, and they made her more beautiful. We saw right, a beautiful woman, it, and made her extremely ugly. Yeah, <laughs> to me, it's just it's different um, cultures and what they're trying to sell the game for. Uh, we don't know if Disney had a hand in that as well, right? Like, remember, this is not just Ubisoft deciding this. This is a big ass corporation that also decides every minutia moment of what goes into this game and what. Yeah, but then 
But then, you, you know, know, look at uh, the Fallen Order games, you know, the Star Wars Jedi, like... Again, uh, like, it, it's a... It's a... It, it, it's I I agree to that extent, right? Like, um, have they made the guys look more like the guys and the girl the 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 women don't look necessarily like the the women do the models? Yeah, you could no, point do. that out. You could definitely and, and, point no, that out. Star Wars Jedi, they uh the well the main female actress looks exactly like how she looks in real life. <laughs> right, but I I think it's just um. I don't know if it's the studio. I don't know if it's Disney decided they don't want uh, her to to be like the next face of Star Wars, or I don't know what the decision comes down to to exactly how they decide to animate. I know that devs have talked about that it's not easy to do these one to one things for everyone. Right. Um, but remember, okay. the stuff also tends to cut corners sometimes with that kind of thing. Everyone like, is fine, but the main yeah. character is. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I just think it's like it's extremely off putting. I don't think most, you know, I, I don't think that like most guys want, you know, they don't they don't need like a Laura Croft or like the sexiest character ever. But someone somewhat aesthetically pleasing is nice. <laughs> like I mean, I, I like... particularly like, okay, if we're, if we're going to get into this, I think it just, to me, it depends on what we're talking about here. Right. Because I think the stellar blade thing has been absolutely blown out of proportion. It is absolutely ridiculous. It's gotten into levels that go beyond just the video game to the point where we're only talking about what the the fake pixel uh, female character looks like and not the actual game. And yeah. that's my problem is that, look, developers and, and whoever makes these decisions, whether it's for Star Wars, whether it's Southern Blade, whether it's uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, whether it's whatever insert character, whether they're you think they're ugly or not, um, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Uh, right. don't, I don't know why X is it DEI. I don't know. I don't really want to get into that. I've avoided talking that, about right. that the yeah, entire that, time. Yeah. Um, but I would say this yeah. is a game that it just makes it really stand out to me. Right. That it's like, but I mean, it's oh. also with the setting of the character, like it does it, does it, would it help? Maybe some folks will buy it or not buy it because of that. But it's like I think a lot of people just aren't going to care. It's Star Wars. Like, well, that and, that that's Yen's yeah. position. Actually, is the opposite. Is he doesn't care because Ubisoft, <laughs> right? But I mean, like the fact that what was just you know, if you're watching our video, I just played the trailer, and and the stuff they've shown of the game looks interesting. Like I'm interested because it's different. It's not you're not playing a Jedi. You're not. Uh, playing other, you're playing different. You're playing like a Han Solo type character in this game, and, and it's I don't know. To me, it's cooler than just focusing on whether you think the the female character that you're playing as is hot or not. Right. I, I you know, but, I don't. Yeah, it's just go well, ahead. No, they didn't cast you know, uh carrot top or the equivalent of him in 1970 as han solo the cast a very all-american boy right but <laughs> i mean that's different you're trying to start the entire star wars and this is a movie like you're i i think it's different when you're watching something right you're watching it it needs to be aesthetically pleasing there needs to be somebody that's hot Needs to be get somebody that's in the door, right? It happens with everything. Like, I'm just saying, you know? like, yeah, but I don't want to. I I don't think most people are going to want to play a game, and it's nothing against her, uh, at all. They don't want to play a game where you look, where you play as the as the Amy Sedaris character from The Mandalorian for twenty or forty hours, you know. And don't get Amy Sedaris is actually attractive. But they would have to really ugly her up for the Mandalorian, and tend, you know, because he's, you know, 
living on a fucking, de- you know, in this desert for, you know, 40 or 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, just think but, it's a, I, yeah. I think it's a weird it's a weird trailer. Uh you know, we can move off it. I, I the game will probably be okay, but I ain't gonna probably the problem is it'll probably just come and go like a lot of Ubisoft's crap these days. Like yeah. it'll come out, it'll be it'll be talked about for a week, maybe, and then Yeah, like be gone. I, <laughs> you know. I don't know. I mean, I wanna see how much of the Ubisoft stuff is gonna be in that game. Right. We haven't oh, that's seen good, that it, yet. That's the other thing. Uh, yeah. The pricing on it is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. They. Um, well, it's seventy dollars for the standard, as you would expect. Yeah. But they have two different editions. One of them has the season pass uh, with the the DLC and all that stuff, and then you get the early access. And then there's another one that's one hundred and twenty dollars. That you get, you get more of it. <laughs> you know, yeah, like... you get more uh, stuff. Um, Plus the three days early access, and it, it is what what games are, you know. Today, uh, uh, you don't well, have to buy it. Like, yeah, uh, speak with your wallet if you don't like the fact that Ubisoft charged one hundred twenty dollars for that stuff that's in the Ultimate Edition. Speak with your wallet. Don't buy it. Like, yeah, uh, uh, is it outrageous? Funny. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Oh, I think it's but, funny. The the ultimate edition is 130 bucks USD. Yeah. Uh, and in Canada it's 200. And Same. if you did the, yeah, if you did the, you know, the currency difference, it actually so it'll it would only be about like 180. So, they're even overcharging the, there as well. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's. Um... I don't know. Yeah, I probably I, get yeah. it, but I don't know. Um, I think it just kind of depends for me on like what else is coming out around that time. Like if there's like if we get oh. to August and like around that time there's like nothing else. Yeah, I'm interested in it enough to really to think about it. Again, my my other issue is that it's a story based game, uh, and it's also Ubisoft. And how quickly is that thing going to be at fifty dollars? For a month, forty-five dollars. Yeah, you know, and that's it's. It almost makes me want to do the same thing I did for Prince of Persia, where it's like, oh, I'll just subscribe to Ubisoft Plus for a month. I mean, that's the thing is they're heavily yeah. pump, pimping that thing out because yeah, you can spend one hundred thirty bucks in the Ultimate Edition, or you know, rent Ubisoft or buy Ubisoft Plus for a month and get the Ultimate Edition with that. It's like yeah, and and you still get the three days early thing, yeah, which is hilarious to me. Like it's like, I guess you're hoping to God that the person will just forget and stay subscribed for another couple of months before they figure out that they, uh, yeah, are still subscribed. I don't know. <laughs> like that is exactly what they're doing. <laughs> because I mean, other than that, like you're, I got the ultimate edition for essentially. 18 bucks, bucks and yeah. then i can go and and get the standard edition and i still saved a lot of money right you know so it's it's a man i get what they're doing but it's like i don't think it works like that where if you're it, it's i think it's nice because the way that xbox does it is kind of shitty um, if you're a long time Game Pass subscriber, right? Yeah. But with Ubisoft, it's kind of weird because they probably know that there's not people that are just subscribing to Ubisoft Plus all the time. So, like, it's a way to get you in the door. And then they're hoping that you'll like some other Ubisoft stuff and stay subscribed. And I don't know. It's just, it's better in the way that you don't feel like, oh, well, People that paid $120 get the three days early, but I'm a Game Pass subscriber and I have to wait. And I've been subscribed to Game Pass for all this time. So I kind of get people's feelings on it both ways. But, you know, that's the thing. If you're going to offer me that, I think now I get it. A lot of people that that aren't into, uh, you know, what they're not watching, paying attention to the gaming stuff all the time are probably not even going to know this, right? 
Um, how much are they going to promote that in any kind of ads and stuff that they show of the game? Like I, I see this, all, I see the ad all the time now when I watch something on YouTube, but like, I wonder if you watch this on with your regular shows and stuff, how much Ubisoft plus is going to show up in the ad and you're going to get a lot more people subscribing through Ubisoft plus you finish the game. And maybe they don't even buy the actual game at all. Right. Uh, so you've got that issue as well. This is not like a multiplayer game that people are going to continue to play constantly. This is a game that they're going to just probably play and that's it. It's over. Um, so until they come out with the DLC, which, you know, who knows how long that's going to take. Is, is one of them going to be out before the end of the year or are they both coming out in 2025? Uh, we'll see. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it's a cool three-minute trailer. Good to know that we know what's going to gonna happen in the story. Uh, I'm intrigued by it. Uh, the, the one... Yeah. I don't even think she was in the trailer, but the one funny thing I did see was that... Uh, I forget the character's name, but Amelia Clark's character from Solo was supposed to be in it. I think mm-hmm. her name is Kira. Yes. And, and they were like... But she's not coming back to voice the character. And I'm just thinking, yeah, no shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't need, nope. need to say that. Like, I already have that and moved on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not surprised at all there. Um, but all right. Uh, speaking of showing more new games here, we had the Triple I Showcase which is essentially like just kind of putting a bunch of like the, I guess, more known indie devs together and saying, here's a showcase for those games. Uh, What did you think about it? Like, I guess the way Uh, they did it and and the games that got announced. I think they showed about 25 or 30 games, maybe, maybe a little less. Uh, I would say it's pretty split half and half between either city building games or dual joystick shooters. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of uh, rogue, rogue games as well. In there. I'd, I'd classify that in the dual joystick shooter part, you know, honestly. Like, yeah. That, that Hades knockoff looked really seamless, I thought. Uh, well, there were actually a few Hades knockoffs. The, the one that was kind of interesting was the... Uh, 33 Immortals, or what the fuck it was called. Uh, yes, that's the one that, yeah, they've shown it off a few times. It's okay. going to be on Game Pass, yeah. Uh, but I thought it was okay, but I sort of kind of get bored just because it's like you're showing 30 games, 25 of these games are pretty interchangeable, I would say. A lot of sequels also to games I didn't play in the first play. You know, they didn't really, inter- like, some of it, they didn't introduce that well. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a different time in games at that point. It, it was just kind of hard to, like, part, you know, they shut off, at, I think, that, like, at least three or four city building games all in, like, a kind of a row. Yes, that's it. And I was like, what, what it is, like, I, I kind of got lost. Like, the only, only one I remember, the two I remember, one was, uh, like the fallout one where mm-hmm. you're building city, like you're building a city, like in the post apocalypse or whatever. And then one was like that weird dinosaur Lord one, uh, which played it straight for like halfway. And then like, Oh no. Yeah. I, that one I liked though. That was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. The way that they kind of played that up where, Oh, okay. This is going to be a strategy defense game, whatever. And then, Oh, here comes a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> and it's like, all right. This is, yeah. Uh, but I'm like the other, that. yeah, mountain one, like born as shit. I thought uh, there were at least like two or three kind of cutesy looking ones that you know did nothing for me personally. And it's like, right. wow, okay, <laughs> like yeah. I mean, you kind of hit the it kind of hit the. This is what's kind of big in indie at the moment. You know, the survival no, games. Hit- yeah, kind of hit the, the. This is what's big in PC gaming at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Um, because a lot of this stuff is, a lot of this stuff is really Steam only. Like, right? There or wasn't PC's, a whole lot yeah. that was coming. There were a few to things console. on. There was some some of the stuff, but yeah, most of it was like, yep, 
PC. <laughs> Probably the biggest one is Slay the Spire 2 getting announced, which, yes, definitely still there for that. I uh, love Slay the Spire 1, one of my favorite games of the year it came out. Um, still been, still play it here and there. Uh, the fact that we're getting a second one, yes, very, very excited. Not coming until next year. I don't care. Take your time with it. I just want it to be great. Um, we got a interesting that we're getting a Never Alone Two sequel. Uh, yeah, I was not. I was kind of a bit surprised that. I, okay, they have more to say with this game. All right. I, I was more surprised, honestly. I mean, it's been in development probably for a while, but we're getting another uh, Prince of Persia game. <laughs> yeah, the roguelike. Uh, Prince and Prince, which I, I personally think it looks a lot worse than the, than the one that came out just a few months ago. Well, I mean, I, it's it's made by an indie. I think we should, uh, you know, I mean, kind of understand that. <laughs> but I, it's not, I like the it's art style. Like I think it's different. It's, you know, it, it looks like it's supposed to kind of look like Dead Cells. It's made by a little some folks from that team. So. Yeah, but Dead Cells looks a lot better. <laughs> like I thought, yeah. I thought it looked looked really just kind of not defined well, or looks like a, like an alpha almost, or like we got the main character. Yeah, kind I mean, of, but we got to remember, like we don't know how far how far in development these some of these games are. Like you know, that thing seemed a little more further along. Some of this, some of this stuff, like it's coming out this year. Yeah, it is. Like, this doesn't have backgrounds, or like you know, like. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I still was interested in it. I right. It. I think the one thing that kind of interested me the most, I mean, it still looks, I think I've seen it before, was that mouse game. Yeah, the the one based on the Mickey Mouse, it's kind of has like a, it looks yeah, like Yeah, Steamboat Willie or Popeye, yeah. Yeah, that one's always intrigued me every time I see it. Yeah. I agree. Um, But yeah, no, I, there's some... There was some some good ones. Like they showed more Hyper Light Breaker, which I'm excited for that too. Even though it, you know it got delayed, uh, I'm uh, excited for a few other ones. I think they, for the most part, they did a good job of like breaking up some of the more known stuff and kind of blending it in between and not just showing you a bunch of the big stuff at the beginning and then just oh here's a bunch of stuff you probably don't care about. But I do agree, like. Showing me three city builders or survival games all after another is kind of like this is all kind of meshing together at <laughs> once. Some yeah, um, even even like the roguelikes yeah. too. It's like yeah, and I yeah. love how they had uh, in the middle. They're like, oh, we promise it's only like a couple more roguelikes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the uh, another one that I've I've actually been excited about, and I was wondering what the heck was going on with it uh, was uh, Flintlock: The Siege of Dawn. Uh, that one looked kind of interesting. Was it, it looks was that yeah. the Castlevania knockoff. No, Flintlock is the one that looks like it's uh, based like on Egyptian. Oh, okay. Uh, like Siri, it had the guy uh, composing on the piano. Oh, oh and, yeah, and, yeah. He shows I, him like saying, well, "I want to have bosses that are different in the regular gameplay and all that." Yeah, yeah. I probably should have wrote, wrote some of the games down that interested me, but. It, it was extru- I thought it was overwhelming to an extent, especially like once you got to the city building games and, and the roguelike stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I can't keep track of this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like how <laughs> nobody's complaining about Chia not going to Xbox. It is going to Switch. Uh, and that was a good game from last year as well. Um, but yeah, and more Risk of Rain 2 stuff. So, you know, more vamp- vampire survivors getting Simon Belmont. That was uh, I thought the other one was, I the other one was a lot more funny. The uh, oh, what is it? Uh, the Contra game. Oh, the, the Contra, Contra yeah, the Contra with vampire survivors, yeah. Yeah, because V Rising too. is getting the Castlevania stuff. The v, I'm sorry, I got to confuse. Yeah, yeah that, V Rising is getting like, Castlevania, yeah. and the vampire star is getting Contra, and I was like. Wait, a, and then it's coming soon too, like May. But who's so, gonna get DDR? <laughs> the big Konami franchise, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll give Konami credit, man. At least they're using their IP 
her stuff. Uh, yeah, too bad they're not know. doing anything with it or anything good with it. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> my problem with that Contra game was that it was expensive. Not necessarily that, uh, you know. My so, problem with that, that Galigula game. Yeah. My problem with Contra is they're it's still using like a 30 year old framework. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it. So, yeah. That's an issue. Um, but all right. I, I think we kind of covered it. I'm sure you can let us know if you have any uh, favorites there in the comments or right. uh, whatnot. But um, those are, are kind of like the, the big things, aside from one more that we don't really know what's going on because EA kind of put the kibosh on it really fast. So it's all like insider talk of did this really happen? Did it not? Uh, a story came out, Jeff Grubb talking on a giant bomb cast that they were working at, at some point in planning stages or was it ever going to come to light? We don't know, but Dead Space 2 remake or a new Dead Space game was in the planning stages. Somebody was, was thinking about it. Somebody was talking about it. And they killed it basically because dead space one didn't sell well enough it sold two million copies but it wasn't good enough for ea and they decided to go in a different direction so yeah and now they've moved some of that studio uh, over to doing battlefield which probably makes people more upset because we know where battlefield's been for so many years uh it kind of sucks that dead space 2 is a lot of people love Dead Space 2 more than the first one, and then that's the one that's not getting the remake. Right. And it just, yeah. Man, not, not, I don't know. I feel like we can't compare what Resident Evil games do to other horror games. Like, Dead Space is a franchise. We know what it is, but it's you can't compare not, it to some of these other ones. It's not a long-running franchise. I mean... It's not like a huge... It didn't start the genre, let's say. No, it didn't. And then also it's like all the games came out in one console generation and then they were they didn't do anything with them for another oh, whole wow. console generation. Yeah. So people forgot about them. Right. And, and you're, you're going based on... Whereas like Resident Evil has been kept up with through the times. And then when you're yeah. doing a remake of those, people are excited. And then also the remakes were done very well, right? Um, well, except for so maybe three, you know, we can debate that or whatever. But for the most part, they've all been beloved. And then yeah. Death Race remake was done really well, too. It's just it also came out in a time where there was stuff that came out like right after it that, that kind of made it to where you're not going to. It's not like Dead Space 1 remake came out and had a bunch of time to breathe. Yeah, I think it came out right after uh, that other game, the other the sci-fi boxing one or the horror game. Yeah. That, that bombed horribly. Well, that killed yeah. Callisto Protocol. Yeah, that's what right? I that's what I meant. Yeah. Um but it was like weird confusion in the marketplace to an extent because it kind of looked similar. <laughs> but it cut it it was one of those like January right, you know, late January releases. Yeah. Um and, and it's also like when you're when you're looking at just everything that's going to come out in a year and you know that it's EA and that thing is going to go on a sale at some yeah, point. Yeah, but it, it didn't. Yeah. Like, it's still, like, kind of expensive or... Well, th there was that period where it was, like, by by mistake went on sale for, like, seven bucks or whatever, too. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's like, 40... It's 43 bucks right now. Uh Yeah. Maybe it hits like thirty. I'll, I might consider it. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I don't know. It's a shame. But I, 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 like you said, or you know, I don't think Dead Space has like the name cachet or like the franchise cachet, and also like that last uh, Dead Space Three left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Uh, yeah. So. I, I mean, I think people also looked at it and probably said, "Okay, if there's a horror game I'm buying, I'm going to buy Resident Evil for a remake. I'll just buy that later." Yeah. Right. I, and, I think, yeah. You know, I think horror games also like one or two are going to be popular, but most of them just kind of, you know, come and go or. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, you you had stuff come out around then. Uh, you had, Hogwarts Legacy was going to come out pretty soon at that yeah. point, too. People were probably saving up money for that. Um, regardless of what the the talk was online at the time, a high fi right. rush had taken a lot of the 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 zeitgeist because of its shadow dropping, and it came out like a couple of days before that. Um, yeah. Then you had the the negative for spoken stuff too, so it's like I don't know. I I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. And EA, I wish EA wouldn't have just said, "Okay, well." This didn't do well. We're just not going to do it. It sucks. It sucks to see what they could have done with a new one of those or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, believe me, I think people would be more excited for Dead Space 2 or like maybe a Dead Space 4 than yeah. another Battlefield game. Exactly. Like, yeah, It's different. I know we're getting a lot of horror games, but there's a lot of horror games. Like, look at Alone in the Dark. It came out. No one cares. Yeah. Um, it wasn't good. When you have a good one of those, people talk about it. You know, it um, wasn't at, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But yeah, it's still middling. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like okay, it's there, right? And and like you have to be when you have so many good options to great options of horror games now. You can't just be like, oh, we're going to be a good one of those. You know, and Dead Space Two was exceptional. Dead Space Remake was exceptional. And unfortunately, yeah. Resident Evil 4 came out and ate its lunch uh, because yep. it is also exceptional. And, you know, uh, yeah. it happens, right? And then again, like, you lose out to the highest selling game of the entire year in Hogwarts Legacy. I mean, you can't really <laughs> right. do much about that either. So, yeah, I, I think it's just EA is... But I get it. We're not the ones paying for the game. We're not the ones doing the production for the game. So it is their decision at the end of the day, but it just sucks. It sucks to see. Um, yeah. Speaking of sucky decisions, uh, EA Play is also going to go up in price. Uh, from I don't know how this is going to affect Game Pass. Uh, they haven't announced that. If it is going to make Game Pass go higher, I doubt it. There's probably some kind of thing in there where you know, they're still getting something out of that. I don't know if Microsoft just gives them more money or whatever. Um, but it's going up from four ninety nine U.S. dollars to five ninety nine a month, uh, so just a dollar. And then it's going up for the pro subscription. It's going up two dollars from fourteen to sixteen. Yeah, uh, it's it's actually hasn't changed in price since they brought it out. So this is not like a recent thing. So this is not that bad, really. Uh, but you're not really getting anything different than what you were getting. But if you like that stuff and you're a big, you play a lot of EA's games, it's great for like the trials. It's great for that kind of thing. If you're, if it's an EA game and you're kind of not sold on it, pick up that trial, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, that's good for that. Um. Oh, wow. I didn't realize what time it was. <laughs> we're going to have right. to like. Kind we of started, started late, the, yeah. The end. Um, so Microsoft made a deal with NetEase so that the Blizzard game could come back to China. Yep. And also Microsoft might have a deal with their own games as well, the release there. Uh, or so sense. get some of NetEase, so get some of NetEase games All right. on Game Pass, maybe. Not sure how that's gonna work, but and that's great. We know how much uh Blizzard makes would make a lot of money from their games being playable in china this is probably going to help that uh, i think it's one of the things that i think they said they were going to make a big deal about uh once they got the rights to having blizzard and they were able to make good on that so good for microsoft in that respect yeah i guess and uh this kind of ties into the whole uh star wars outlaws price thing and all that too um the saber interactive uh, it's former former Embracer COO, but now works at Saber works with Saber since they split. Is um, saying that he thinks that part of this, with all the layoffs and everything, that we're going to see fewer seventy dollars games. We're going to see fewer big budget games. Uh, we're not going to have them constantly come out like we've had this year and last year. We had a lot of them. Uh, they're going to start tapering off. We're going to see a lot more double A 
uh, and the indies be kind of the the standard. Uh, do you think that we need to be getting get, be getting prepared for that? Like the Sony will still be doing their thing. You still get your, you know, Final Fantasy Seven Part Three and that kind I don't of think, thing. Yeah. I don't think so. At least not when it comes to you know embrace for stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, embrace for stuff is different, obviously. But I think they're saying like by and large, you think people are going to lower that quality because they need to cut costs, right? Because of all the stuff that's happening, or we're going to have enough AAA where it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, I think we'll have enough AAA, you know. Like, we just need one or two to hit a year. Hit a year. We already got one of those this year. So, yeah, I, I do think that also, like, when you look at the Dead Space thing to tie that into, it's just it's the economy, man. Yeah, uh, that's that's going to dictate more than anything. Uh, these seventy dollar games, these big budget games, these. Uh, putting out a $70 game and then quickly having to put it down to 50 or 40 because right. people just don't have the money to, you might just like, I, I was listening to a podcast today and like, if you really think about it, even in the U S right, we're not in, this is not even counting other countries where it's even more expensive to buy a game. If you're buying the one seventy dollar game a month, that's what, like over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Or close to that. Um, that's a lot for a lot of people. Right. Right. So then you try to get them to buy two of those or a $70 one and a $40 one. They might pick the $40 one. Like this is why hell divers too, not so much of being fun and being something you can do with your friends and you can play constantly. Right. Which all those things help. It's $40 and yeah. people can just say, Oh, Hey, have you played hell divers two yet? Oh, dude, play with me, you know, or, or, Hey, uh, you know, get my girlfriend to play or whatever. And it's only 40 bucks. Right. And it's harder to sell somebody on a $70 game when everybody's got to buy the $70 game, you know? And, and like, that's where the call of duties and, and all of those are going to, and the sports games are going to reap the profits because they're going to buy those all the time anyway. And uh, that's not going to change, you know? So I do think he's right in a certain extent. We're either going to see those AAA games not come out, right? Um, or you're you're going to see people just decide, okay, we're going to have to start cutting corners. That It's not going to look as great. We might have more games that look like Rise of the Ronin, and you're going to have to kind of deal with that. Even though you have consoles that can maybe make them look better, or especially PCs that make it look a lot better. But unfortunately... Would you rather have the game or just not have the game because it doesn't look like amazingly freaking uh, next gen, whatever you think that is? Yeah. You know, so we just have to uh, keep that in perspective, I guess, as time goes on. Both of us yeah. haven't really been playing anything like of note, honestly, that we need to like dive deep into. Yeah, I can talk about more more about rival schools next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, I've been uh, I've been playing the Crisis Core. Uh, remaster yeah. on ps5 um, no one thing i was going to bring up yeah. is this kind of just happened as we've been podcasting but i guess the developer possibility space just went under <laughs> uh it sucks yeah i saw that i saw um a few tweets like a talk or... thing yeah some tweets while we were talking yeah. um again another studio being no that, that yeah. it's really weird how they went this went under because the founders accusing some some of his own people of leaking to the press about their game, and that's why. Yeah, because the uh, was it Kotaku had like an interview with one of them or something. Yeah. Um. So we we'll, we'll can probably talk about that more about next week about how that's false and. <laughs> yeah. How, <laughs> whatever nonsense he was trying to. Yeah, trying get to into say. there. Yeah. Uh, but really quick, uh, before we get out of here, um, just. Just talk about some games here. Uh, next Thursday, so I'll talk about it when we do the show next week. It might be one of the the big things for next week. Uh, the last DLT for Final Fantasy 16, Rising Tide, yeah. comes out. Um, I'll probably try to see if I can complete it by that before we get to the doing the episode. Um, yeah. So I'm sure many of you are that that are actually 
happy about Pompeii 15. I know that's the, the game to make fun of uh, for, well, for a lot of people. Um, I, I'm not excited for it to be back in the zeitgeist again because I'm sure that's going to be all over the conversation. Uh, also, make sure you go check out, if you like uh, artsy games, you like stop motion, stuff like that, go check out Harold Halibut when it comes out on, on the 16th. That's on Game Pass. So yeah. um, it looks like it's going to be really cool. So definitely go um, check that out. If you haven't played Grounded yet, go play that on your PS5 and all that stuff. Uh, that's coming out as well. And yeah, we'll talk about more of that stuff uh, next week. Also, No Rest for the Wicked also coming. So that's also coming out on that Thursday. I know people are excited about that. Uh, <laughs> Scott's like, how dare the press get exposure to their game? Exactly. Uh, they they got the exposure and they get mad. And also, uh, K-Med, thank you so much for telling us that, that you enjoy the podcast. I appreciate that. We'll um, got to pick up my kid from school. I yep. uh, hope you all enjoy the podcast. Go like, subscribe, all that stuff. And we'll see you all later. Later. Bye.